right, we're going to start it off with the joys of Christmas shopping <laughs> and the deals. <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe we could just spend 30 minutes talking about water sticks. That seems to be one of our most popular uh, yeah, subjects of the last year. Yeah, yeah. if we did like a year-end review of most popular topics on a triathlon-related podcast, I have to imagine water sticks is like top two or three. That seems to pop. <laughs> now we know they are divining rods or dousing sticks or whatever they're called. A lot of variations. And I knew uh, I'm that. Sure I just now. couldn't get it. Couldn't yeah, find sure it. Now they cost like, you know, $299 for a carbon one. I know. <laughs> carbon. <laughs> Nature's <laughs> mood rings. Yeah. Exactly. Get it, you know, like interchangeable grips on the end of it. I mean, they got all kinds of, all kinds of things. But that was a, it's a great fun discussion. It was a great way to kick off uh last week's podcast glad to keep everyone engaged hope you're all having a wonderful start to your holiday season uh this is our last week of casting in another year down 2023 uh and after this week's we'll see in 20, 2024 we'll take a little bit of a break detox from the year re-energize ourselves spend time with family and friends we hope you do the same i think it's a just busy time overall for everybody kids are out of school you got gifts you got presents you got family coming in you got in-laws you got you know it's just busy uh, so hope you're all enjoying yourself, taking a little bit of time off. Uh, it's your first time tuning in today. Welcome. We appreciate you giving us your time. We know you have quite a lot of options in the triathlon podcast universe and just podcasts in general. Time is your Bible, so we appreciate you tuning in today. We cover it all. We do swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We do race recaps and also a lot of race previews. But for the most part, Mike and I as coaches, athletes, best friends, we just sit back, relax, have an open and honest discussion about what we're going through in life not just as human beings, but also as coaches and athletes ourselves. Mike and I also talk frequently about what our own athletes are going through. Uh, we work with a wide range of athletes all across the globe from beginner level athletes in the very first 5K or sprint triathlon all the way up through elite level amateurs trying to get back to world championships and everyone in the team is all over the globe and use the feedback loop we have with them and training peaks, emails, text messages, and the like to drive the discussion of the day. We also like to utilize our Facebook group. You can search that crushing iron group answer one simple question we'll let you right in awesome people fantastic community solid resource and we go in there about every four to six weeks take the pulse of the community get questions do our best to answer as many of them as we can but that is it we have no sponsors we have no ads but we do have an important agenda what's that to do our best to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey yeah and how are we doing for you man healthy and happy over there I am. I am okay. healthy and yeah, I'm happy. And there's really not much, you know, really not much to complain about these days, in my opinion. I mean, people are always going to find things to complain about, but no, life is good. It's busy, but it's, you know, that's, that is what it is. So I'm enjoying things. I'm taking a little bit of time off and a little sabbatical at the end of the year, detoxing, trying to spend uh, extra time with, uh, with family and my mom, my sister are coming in town this week. Uh, Hayden's, you know, last day of school's tomorrow. Got hockey. He's got his first pond hockey tournament on Friday, and uh, that's, that's but yeah, big. it's gonna be a good time. Looking forward to uh, spending some time watching uh, football, watching hockey, watching basketball, and uh, eating some good food. Pond hockey, that's big, man. That's a big step for him. Yeah, he's pumped. He's uh, he's got all. It's like three on three, uh, and so he's he's pretty stoked. So it's gonna be an all day all day event. So, but, uh, but yeah, should be interesting. Is it frozen? Wait a minute. No, no, no. When I say pond, I don't mean he's going to be act- on an actual pond. It's not cold. It's not that cold here yet, oh, but they, yeah. there's a outdoor rink that they'll, that they'll go to and they'll, and they'll put up the pond hockey goals, which are a lot different than the regular goals. Uh, they're a little bit narrower and they're only about a foot high. So oh, you can't yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. you can't, you can't go top shelf. You just got to, and there's no goalies. So it's mm-hmm. just fast paced 15 minute games. Yeah. Um, they have the, they have a huge one up. It's probably a couple hours north of here where they get. Oh, like I, I've seen it. Yeah. There, you, you guys in rinks. Minnesota, like some of the biggest, yeah, some of the most big time pond and pond hockey tournaments that there are. Yeah. You get all the has beens up, like all my old buddies and shit that come up and <laughs> <laughs> they, they just down about 25 they, natty lights and then hit the ice. 100%, dude. And, yeah. you know, I'm just like, oh my goodness. Well, they all end with a brawl because, you know. Oh, you, it's always brawling. I remember when you slept with my girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. Jenny, in third grade. <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah. Whatever. But, yeah, that's what the holidays are for. <laughs> I, uh, 
Yeah. I thought about going to watch one of those once, but then I was like, no. Nah. Pass on it, man. We won. Pass on it. Because then the cops show up. They do. But luckily, the cops are probably high school. It's a small town, Wisconsin. The cop shows up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What are you boys doing? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Look, it's Jimmy. He actually made something of himself. He's a government man. mm, Mm hmm. Yeah, so uh, what were we going to talk about? I was I was telling <laughs> you about my... About your, we were talking about your blistering lake run. But yeah, it, yeah. To be fair, I mean, in all honesty, you know, we we chat before the show, and, you know, when we don't have a very strategic outline, right, that we planned out a year in advance for what we're talking about today, we just get to talking about, and like we kind of say in the intro, we talk about, you know, what we're, what we're going through as athletes and coaches and what we see as coaches, but also what we feel and, and go through as athletes and they always kind of have something. I thought yours was a great topic for for today, just because of the time of year, but also just a good reminder for for any athlete at any time of any part of the season. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, I'm really in this mindset thing right now too, so I think that helps. I mean, yesterday I I kept looking outside at the the, the flag was just tight, and that wind was gusting, and it was about 20 degrees and. I said, you know what, I'm going to go. And I went out and there's the, the lake here and there's a beach and the, the loop is like five miles. And I went out, uh, you know, I, I just had like a t-shirt under a hoodie and I was a little concerned about that. Um, and you know, you, every time you go out into these things and you wonder if you're dressed right and everything. And I was thinking, you know, <laughs> the fear, I'm going to be two miles away. Am I going to freeze to death? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> And, but it was so windy and it was just biting. But anyway, I went out and I kind of was in this, uh, a lot of times I'll just, uh, on the beach, especially I'll walk around because the sand is so tough to run on. But today it was, it was hard yesterday. And so I was like, "Mm, I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to walk. I'm just going to slow down. And like I told you, I felt like it was a typical pace for me, but I certainly think I ended up going way too hard for the, uh, I don't know, way too hard. I mean, it was kind of a nice, challenging run, and I wanted to see what I had. But when I got done, I felt really good. But then um, I was going to take a little plunge, so I turned the sauna on. I went upstairs and kind of laid down for a minute. I was out for like two hours. (laughs) The whole thing, I woke up. It was dark. But um, so I woke up tired that morning. I got on the bike for a minute, and I did that run. I felt awesome and alive and everything. And then I got tired again, and then I came, woke up, and I'm like, damn. I actually feel good again. So I just kind of needed a nap or something. And I just hydrated back up and started feeling good again. So I was just talking to you about how, you know, sometimes I don't, I, I'm trying not to throw in the towel all the time, you know, just based on a sort of fleeting feeling that you have or whatever, you know, you can kind of, it's always a cycle of recover and rest and go get it and stuff like that. And sometimes those can be my, uh, micro cycles within the day or whatever. But to your point, cold weather i mean there's perfect running weather and then there's like challenging running weather and i think when it starts getting in the teens and 20s and windy and uh, real dry it can make a difference um well i mean it makes a huge difference yeah and we we t- we talk about a lot you know mainly in the summer right when it turns to just really oppressive temperatures and you've got all kinds of external factors you have to think about when you go out for a run or a ride or even a swim right we talked about this i think for the first time this year about how much how much quickly or excuse me how quickly people fatigue in the summertime that swim in an outdoor pool versus an indoor pool just because the water's warmer you're breathing the same you know in the same humidity and and, and dew point and temperature that you are when you go out for a ride and a run and it impacts those greatly and just how extreme those external factors are on your body. And we always talk about it again, in the summertime, I think mainly because it's the meat of the season where most people are doing things outside this time of year, people will find every excuse to be inside, but it's still how your body responds to external factors. And I think as you know, again, as we were talking about before we went live is, I think I mentioned this a month or two ago, but like the very first cold day we had here, I went outside for like a 30, 45 minute and I kept it easy. I mean, like we're talking like the line between zone one and zone two Mm -hmm. and I got done and I about 30 minutes later got some breakfast in me and I feel like I got hit by a truck. Just destroyed. I was wiped. 
And I remember looking at Allie and I just said, I was not prepared for that temperature. And what the reality was is one, yes, I wasn't um, prepared for the temperature, but I wasn't mostly prepared to do was adjust what I knew the external factors and stress were going to do to my body. Right. And we talk about this a lot when we talk about when training peaks does it's, you know, training stress scores and talks about stress and how it impacts your body and how it, it looks at, you know, power and pace and time. It doesn't look at, did you ride outside in 110 degree heat with humidity, high humidity dew point, or did you do it with, you know, 60 degrees? And if you look at, you know, and because obviously heat has a huge impact on your body and same thing goes for you look at like, um, ideal, like perfect running conditions to get your best, you know, half marathon and marathon time, the happy medium, like or the, the kind of the sweet spot for the, your, your best opportunity, right? It's obviously no wind, no dew point, no humidity, but the best temperature range is between like 40 to 48 degrees. And the reason for that is because while you're moving, right, you're obviously creating, you know, uh, you're creating, you're, you're raising your core tip, you're using energy, which is, which is, you know, expending uh, energy and burning calories. You're not having to work, right? Not you, but your body, right? Which sometimes I think we feel disconnected to when we have these assumptions of what our speed is and we don't necessarily uh, think about the impact that the rest of the stress in our body goes because what happens in that kind of speed spot or temperature is your body's not really working hard at all to do two things one it's not working hard to cool itself right because it's not warm not too hot at the same time it's also not working hard to keep itself warm right because it's too cold outside so anytime you kind of veer on to the uh each shot as you see a performance degradation you see your ability to perform at a perfect or at your best highest level of fitness your best speed best power best velocity whatever it is start to see some degradation because as we always talk about you know it's all about energy and when you use it and how you use it and so your body like you don't have like a separate you know uh canister for combating environmental stress just like you don't have you know extra buckets when it comes to fitness stress and life stress and relationship stress and you know everything it's all it's all stress and so anytime your body's having to work extra hard to either keep itself warm or to cool itself you are utilizing energy so and you see this a lot uh this time of year and you know your your example was perfect was that you know i feel like i was running at a zone two and you were you know I, I, for all argument's sake you i'm sure you were that's your usual zone to speed right and i think a lot of us when we when we only train by pace or we don't or we don't train by anything other than rpe you can feel yourself and how quickly you're moving right either down the road how quickly you're you're moving the pedals how quickly you're making it from one end to the other end of the pool this is like this is this is the rate of speed i'm accustomed to feeling or associating with my zone two right but just like in the summertime when it hits August or it's, you know, becomes to be, you know, January, February, it's really, really cold. That effort level in that RPE, you might not feel it in the moment, but it, it's the same reason why, you know, I mentioned this before, a lot of the studies on heat stress uh, and heat related deaths or illness in running events don't come from marathons and half marathons, which you would think it comes from 5Ks and 10Ks. Because it's a short amount of time at a high rate of speed and you don't, your body doesn't have near enough time to calibrate itself because by the time you realize how hot you are, it's too late. And the same thing goes for this time of year with cold or, or you're biking inside, right? And you remove the fan because you want to do your heat training in December, right? When once a week ain't going to cut it, all you're doing, right, is it's a great example and a great thing for people to I think associate with is hop on a treadmill. In RPE immediately goes up. You you think you look down, you're thinking you're running like, you know, 740s because you're sweating a lot. You know, there's no wind, you know, against your face like you create on your own by the speed you're going. And you're not going anywhere. And you look down and you're going 1020s. And you're like, what the hell? My RPE feels like zone three, but my treadmill says I'm zone one. What is going on here? That's the same exact thing, right? It's another example is being on the trainer. You know, you got an industrial fan in front of you. You got some music blaring. And you're you're good to go, right? Things are things are or you get and you got ice in your bottles. Things are great. You're cooling your core temp. You got cool. You got you know cooling your internal. You're cooling your external. Think about this: if you 
are uh, doing the same power for that same hour, but you remove the fan, you add and you take away the ice in your so you're no longer cooling your core and you're no longer getting that external cooling. Think about how much higher your RP is, and that usually core that usually shows itself in your heart rate, right? Which is always kind of great to. It's not always something I recommend to just always go by heart rate, but I all but I always uh, recommend having it as kind of a, uh, an affirmation or maybe like a, Hey, like a, like a silent or a, 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 a siren or an alert, like, Hey, maybe, maybe check on things, maybe make sure you're not going too hard because while a power might be one thing, if your heart rate is expressing that, you know what? I know the power and this power is usually you get one thirties heart rate, which is your zone two. If your heart rates, one forty five, one forty nine. What your body is telling you is that the combined factors, right, your power plus whether it's life, lack of sleep, caffeine, heat, cold, is having an actual impact of a stress on your body that is higher than that. So you might be cruising at a zone two power, but you might feel like zone three. And the best example I can give is is the kind of the uh, – when you look at the differences between average power and normalized power and how that can kind of go across – Swim speed in different conditions, run speed and effort and, and duration in different conditions, whether it's really, really hot, really cold, is that you have your set, you know, zone, which you're, you're you're accustomed to either swimming at, cycling at, or running at, and that's the speed in the um, in which you're used to traveling that feels right according to zone two. But the normalized power in cycling is a physiological response on your body, which is why you want to keep those so together. You can average 200 watts for you know, three hours and have a normalized power of 230, but the physiological response is 230 on your body, but you only got the speed of 200. That's a very, very, very similar kind of, you know, as close to apples to apples as comparison or analogies you can get to just the impacts that we have on our body. And and then, but the, the biggest thing that you touched on was that while you, while you may have been moving in a zone two speed, and had a more stress response that was equal to a zone three or zone four, your body was actually very intelligent in telling you what it needed, right? By listening to it, not making really any drastic decisions on, well, I just don't have it this week, right? I, I, I'm just gonna, I just, I think I need to readjust everything. Your body was like, hey, dude, that was harder than I thought. We need a nap. And then you take one and then you're back, back right? Our body's <clears throat> in, incredibly intelligent that way. If, we choose to listen to it. Yeah. And I mean, the same thing happened, <clears throat> I would say between mile three and four, I was kind of like, uh Oh, you know, cause like you were talking about, you know, it's all about prep too. And I, and, and what you're doing beforehand. And, um, yeah, I had a lot of coffee and stuff, you know, it's like you know, when it's cold out, if you, you know, you drink a lot of water or whatever, you start getting colder. So I was kind of, you know, probably shying away from that. I'm, know subconsciously and then at mile three or four i started feeling like uh oh i'm in trouble and then by the same kind of thing is like i backed it down a little bit and then the last mile felt really good you know so it's these i'm so interested in these little like <clears throat> mental challenges and well even physical i guess in the sense of how do you get through things and as i've been embracing the cold now and I'm actually just really excited about it, to be honest, because I know that, you know, perfect weather and stuff like that is really appealing. But for me, I, I love the toughness of it. And I find myself kind of gravitating towards, well, you know, I got a nice smooth road out here, but let's go mix it up. And then it's like, how do you develop that toughness quotient in your system for when you need it? And that I just like thinking about that because, I mean, from the get go, for me, ever training for long course, triathlon, Ironman, it's always been about, about toughness, you know, uh, um, and recognizing, you know, variations of that. Like, you know, when I started, it was, it was just difficult to kind of keep a pace for like a 5K, you know. I mean, there, that's a different kind of toughness. And then you develop that over time. And then how are you going <clears> to <throat> get through a full – you know, sitting in an arrow for like five or six hours or whatever. And those types of things I like to work on. I mean, I'm, I'm 
glancing at my watch, but I'm not caring about the pace or anything like that. I know that I'm developing. It's some. It's like you know when you have a. It's almost like uh, old school when you know you have a solid day of work. You don't really write it down. You just know you worked hard, whatever it is in the yard or you know those types of things. And that those are the dynamics that I'm really intrigued by right now. I know that um, at some point, you know, it might have to be a little more fluid, but for the most part, it's just going out and exploring and seeing and figuring things out on the fly. Um, but yeah, so I got done. I took that nap, but I was ready to go. I, I'm not like train again, but it was sort of a mental recalibration. And that's so huge too, right? You know, you get like that mental fatigue is what kind of knocks you out. And that's what I think I talk about when I, when I'm working on toughness in the middle of a run or something, because a lot of times it's sort of my brain saying, Nope, shut it down or whatever. Um, so how do you get through that? And I, I just think there are many ways. Well, I mean, you, there's so much to take from that. And I, before I start going off on a spiel again, <laughs> sometimes I feel like I'm losing my, did I talk through on last week's podcast? I talked through, uh, my decision to, um, not take Hayden to hockey practice last week. Um, no, I don't think I don't think you did. Yeah, but it just goes perfectly to your. Maybe you did. To your point. Well, you know what? If I did, I'm doing it again. Yeah, listen, we need to do it again, obviously, because yeah, we need to do it again. Is, it, is the, it, the mother of all. Yeah, I mean, it goes to directly to the point of what you're talking about, right? In terms of of listening to your body and then making mistakes and try to self correct, but also not you know, making these macro decisions based on a micro feeling, mm. right? You know, I think we do that a lot. I mean, athletes do this all the time. I see it, especially in November, <sighs> December. Uh, it, it, it doesn't look, my, look like my year is going to pan out the way I thought. I think I'm just not going to race next year. You're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> slow down for a minute, right? <laughs> like, like just because life's crazy the next four to six weeks doesn't mean you need to plan the next 50 right same can be said for man things are really cruising right now let's do two to three fulls next year i think i think i can i think i can yeah. call it on and go pro you're like mm, i love the enthusiasm but let's just pump the brakes right <laughs> just for a little bit and i think the 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 message is is don't go pedal to the metal and don't slam on the brakes right a lot of times it's 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 just good to take the foot off the accelerator not even touch the brake and just kind of see what happens. Let the car slow itself down. Right. And, you know, I think when it comes to decision making, that's, it's really hard to do sometimes. Right. We think about all the stress and we, I went through this last week is I talked about, we have, I talk a lot about Hayden has his, his love for hockey. And right now he's got two to three practices a week and then a game, uh, sometimes four practices in a game. And then the other days, he doesn't have anything. It's like Mondays and Thursdays. He doesn't have any scheduled hockey. And the first thing he asks when he gets home is, can we go to chicken and pickle? <laughs> and chicken and pickle is like, you know, the, it's a, you know, a pickleball place, but they got, you know, a bar a restaurant. They have this outdoor skating rink because all he wants to do is skate. And if there's not enough people there, he can skate with a stick and a puck. And sometimes they'll put goals out. So it's just more skating time. And as a parent, it's hard to like, okay, I know you really want to, and I'm all for you wanting to be outside and not coming home and asking to play video games. You know, so it's kind of a hard, like, back and forth. So last Monday, he came home. He did. He was like, I, he was like, I want to go chicken pickle. I'm like, you know what? I don't, you know, I, I'm I'm good to go right now. Let's go. So we went chicken pickle, and he skated nonstop for two hours. Mm. I mean, he may have taken a total of five minutes off the ice and just wore himself out. Comes home, has a great time. It was fun watching him. And then uh, Tuesday, gets up. He's supposed to have practice tonight at 610. Tuesday, gets up. He's you know, kind of moody before school. Comes home from school. Total asshole. <laughs> total jerk. And as soon as he walked in, like and if you're a parent, you know this feeling. And if all, you know, regardless of that, if you're an adult, you know what you look like in the face when you're just done. When you're done. Right, you're so exhausted. And I looked at him, and, I, and my first thought was, "There's no way you're making it to hockey at six ten. Mm. And so he comes in. His attitude was 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 crap. 
which is you know, rarely ever the case. But you know, when we're hungry, when we're tired, we all you know every person, right? Your emotions go out the window. You start acting the way you would normally act. We got into an argument, and I just said, I said, we're not going to hockey tonight. And then that just made him flip out even more because he was mad and he didn't go to hockey. And so after he has a little melt- meltdown, I go upstairs and I and I pull him aside. And I said, listen, you not going to hockey is not a consequence. It is just me realizing that you are way too tired to go do it. Even if you love it, even if you want to go, even if it feels right to do it, even if you're going to hate missing it, you don't need to go today. And that's okay. And I kind of had to ask, I was like, so what would you, what would you tell me if I wanted to go swim right now, but I was acting the way you're acting and I was yawning and I looked tired. What would you tell me to do? And he would say, I would tell you not to go. And I said, all right then. And, but the, the message I was trying to send him, and I think it's a message we all need to send ourselves too, is that not doing it isn't a consequence and it's not about not feeling good enough or like you can't handle it. It was just the fact. And, and honestly, truly as a parent, what I told him was, is we shouldn't, we shouldn't have gone as long as we did the day before that's on me. Right. And is it hard to balance like doing that free stuff? But the, the more present day story is we'd skipped hockey you know, made the decision, sit in the PJs and watch, you know, instead of playing hockey, watch hockey. The rest of the week, he had to practice Wednesday, Friday, game Saturday, practice Sunday. Best stretch of hockey he's played in a month. Rested, good mood. And so every day I tried to, he would come home. And if I didn't go to practice, I'm like, hey, how was practice? He's like, oh, it was great. I got, you know, I'm doing this better. I said, you want to know why? Yeah, yeah, you know, he's like rolls his eyes. I know because I didn't go on Tuesday. <laughs> That's right, because <laughs> we took a day off, right? We took a day off. We didn't, we didn't say we don't know hockey all week. We didn't say we're going to change things up next week. We just tried to do a real time assessment of what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong, how can we set ourselves up for success tomorrow? And I share that story to to say as as athletes, whether you're coached or self coached, a lot of times you hear that from athletes is don't don't take that away. Right, because they feel like it's an indictment on their ability or their fitness level or the commitment or that they can't hack it. But a lot of times it's just again life, life stress, external stress, right? The it's it doesn't have to just be the environmental stress you get from running in the cold or running in the heat, but you know, you could have had too much caffeine or you could have had nothing to eat at all, right? You could have slept here, you could have been on, you know, uh, on incense, you could be whatever it is, you have these external factors. And again, as, as athletes, we love to make long-term plans or remove plans and goals based on things that are happening in like a millisecond. We'll just reshift everything. You, know, you have this with athletes all year long, no matter what happens. I think I'm just going to take things down to just running. I think that fits my life better. And sometimes it does. And then for about a week later to them to say, I think I'm ready to start biking and running again. I think I want to do these races. I'm like, that's just, that's why it's so important to, again, <clears throat> not to try to make macro adjustments based on, based on micro, you know, uh, things that have happened yeah. in your training and in your life. It's hard to be flexible. I get it. I'm the same way, but I can't encourage you enough to be flexible with those things. Understand that that's the greatest path. The, the path of least resistance to where you want to get to is actually to be as flexible as possible, not as rigid and impulsive as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's a great example with Hayden. I think uh, we can all take something from that because really what's the way to not like something is just to keep grinding deeper and deeper into it sometimes. And I think you know, pulling away and keeping his enthusiasm is probably, you know, one of the most important things. I mean, we've all heard of, you know, kids just all they did their whole childhood was practice, practice, practice. And then it was like burnout for 15 years and then they come back later or whatever. But I think it's important that we think about that as well, you know, and for me, it's, it is doing these weird things sometimes and, and mixing it up and, you know, if you keep going through a schedule and and just, I can't do like the repeat, you know, just go out and run on a perfect road and a perfect day and whatever like that. I like to, um, you know, kind of create a different sort of uh, body challenge or mental challenge whenever, whenever I'm, if I run the roads around here, usually I'm looking for, you know, I, I go back to that Amelia, Dip, or no, what was her name? Uh, 
Neely Boone. Neely Boone. Yeah. Uh, like the other day I ran, I was like, I'm, I'm running the roads today. I've been kind of mixing it up a little bit on the rough terrain a little bit too much. So I ro- ran the roads, but I ran outside in the kind of a misty cold rain. And it's just, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's like, I like, I love what you said about don't make macro decisions uh, with micro feelings or whatever, because that is so prevalent. I think we can kind of just get in our head for um, like, and I wrote on that post, I said, don't get in your head too much. I mean, the water isn't as cold as you think it is. And I just like stuff like that is so fascinating to me. And, and that's what I was thinking about, you know, with these, some of these plunges, it's just for me, it sort of changed my mindset a little bit in the sense of like, yeah, just let, let go of your preconceptions and go out and find something that, uh, and just, you know, like I used to always say, if, you know, if you kind of have a little nagging injury, it's like, don't think about it. And I still believe that. I think that you can shift your brain <clears throat> in a way that, you know, it's immediate. It's like we're so conditioned, right? Like, you know, I'll wake up and I'll have like a little plugged up nose or something like that. And it's like, oh, shit, here I go. I'm going to be sick. And I just tell myself, no. You know, what'd you do last night or what do you be eating or whatever? And it's just like a little cleansing process for me now. And I just try to, and I just, you know, kind of, I don't want to say blow through it, but just kind of like, uh, don't believe it and just move on. And I think this is what I talk about with micro moods throughout the day or, you know, how you feel at certain points. It just doesn't, it doesn't define the rest of the day, it doesn't define the rest of the week, and it shouldn't. And I think once you kind of can wrap your head around that a little bit more, it makes a really wild difference. That's, I mean, <clears throat> that resonates with me on on really every level, you know. And and I think we've we do. I think the the world it has put us in a position right with how reactive we can be on um, on an immediate basis, right? You know, 20 years ago, you had to read the paper, read it, Mm -hmm. right? I just Mm -hmm. get it, right? You couldn't, you know, which is, you know, today's version is you pick up the paper at the, on your driveway, you read the only like, you know, bold paid for headline you can see. And then that's how you, you know, distribute the news to your friends. You know, back in the day you had to read it and then you might not talk to a friend for a few days. You had time to sit with it, think about it. If do you like it, do you not like it? What do you really think about it, right? Not an impulsive, uh, you know, thoughts like one of the, um, and we do that with training, right? We're just so impulsive and so immediate with everything. One of the very first people that came, I can't remember his name to save my life, but one of the first people that came to speak to the group that I was in when I was in treatment, he talked about our thoughts. And he, and he said, it's people that are, you know, that are in recovery. Most oftentimes your first three thoughts are always wrong. He said, always about everything. Mm. It's going to be based on fear. It's going to be based on ego. He said, so, you know, so he gave everyone this like tool. He said, you know, run your tongue across every tooth on your, you know, the, of your upper jaw and have that thought and then release it and then go to the next one. And once you do that three times, the fourth one is your actual thought. He Mm. said, don't act on any of the first three. You know, you want to go, you want to go out and drink teeth. Yeah. Teeth all the way to you thinking the other one. That's not a good idea, but maybe I'll do this Think about it. No. And it's like, but as a, as a society now we can immediately think something and I see us all the time and I'll glance through Facebook. I'm like, you sent that shit way too early. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, like that was you you sent that in like, you can still buy like how it's written. It's like, you know, a four liner sentence. You're like, what, what are you really trying to say here? And, mm. but we do that again, like with the decisions we make around everything. But if we would, and I, I mean, I asked, uh, an athlete and as a coach, you know, the longer you're doing this, I think you have a bigger, broader, you know, kind of troubleshooting toolbox, if you will. Like I had an athlete that was talking about the, you know, the, a certain part of her foot was hurting and, you know, they have had no pain anywhere else, nowhere where you would think a stress fracture was. And I just said, this may sound weird. Just may sound weird. Have have you worn heels recently? And it seems like an odd question, but I've had so many females in the past that aren't used to wearing heels 
go out and be in heels or stilettos, pumps, whatever you want to call them, out for the night in the town, and they're in for you know five, six hours, you know whether it's out at a at a at a ball or a, a work function or a conference or this out in the town hitting up you know Second Avenue, and their feet are wrecked for like a week, and as a coach, like you see all these things that we never think all the way through. Like, you know, why is this hurting? Oh, you know, like I played tennis Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm like, man, why my core is like, Oh yeah, I played tennis three times, three days in a row and I haven't played in like six weeks. No wonder I'm sore all over. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. you're doing these movements. You have it's like, but all it takes is this really easy thought. It, it, and I say it easy. It's probably not, but, the, the key is to stay present and think through the logical common sense reasons of why not to hop on WebMD, right? Oh, I've got this thing, but I don't know what it is. I think it might be this. And then you're going to find every reason to figure out that it is that. And so just thinking, oh, okay, all right, that makes sense. Maybe it's not, you know, it's like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. Like it's, it's this, 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 and this. same thing goes with training, right? Why did I feel like trash? Why did I feel great? Right. It's another one that we I don't think we pay good enough attention to is why did I feel so awesome? Oh, I got a ton of sleep. I got like all these factors, every factor from the time you wake up, from the time you go to bed, dictate how you feel. Right. You feel lonely. Right. That impacts your stress level, impacts your mood. Did I am I an introvert that had to extrovert all day? That impacts your stress level. That impacts your mood. Right. How did I eat? How did I sleep? Did I have caffeine too early? Did I have mm. caffeine too late? You know, uh, how did I fuel myself today? Is stress, you know, more, uh, excuse me, is, is work more stressful today? Am I worried about the, and like all, all you have to do is really just like, you know, like triage that. And that's like, to me, I'm not like a fixer, but that one thing I can do, like we were this weekend, uh, no, it was like weekend? no Friday, Thursday night, last Thursday night. Allie runs the garbage disposal. It fell off the bottom of the sink. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm not sure anyone's ever seen that. It just came on from where like a, a, mm -hmm. a piece of steel or it would wrap her. Anyway, it fell totally down. So I get down there and I'm <laughs> trying to, and don't get me wrong here, folks. I sure as hell wasn't trying to fix it. <laughs> I was just trying to triage it. I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. And one of my strengths is knowing my weaknesses. And I am no fucking handyman. And so I just said, she's like, what are you doing down there? Just like I said, listen, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just trying to triage it. I'm just trying to get it to where it's back in its spot. It's no longer, you know, ruining anything. There's no longer water coming out. There's no smell from the food. I'm not saying we're going to use it. I'm just trying to get it back to where it's not, you know, just triage it. And then, you know, have the handyman come by the next day. And to my credit, he only spent 10 minutes, didn't charge us because it did such a good job. But anyway. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, highlight of my last probably 40 years of my life, probably from a handyman standpoint, um, is that the point being is that we, we don't work hard enough to try to think through step by step what went wrong or what went right. We make giant, we, we take huge leaps of assumptions and then do make impulse responses based on that whether all we really need to do is think through it and that's why i think like going back to run camp we talked about it's so much easier right when you think through things to anticipate how your body is going to respond or not respond and then and then that allows you to actually make better real-time decisions like we did the we did a stage race we did a 5k on the first day then we did a marathon the last day it hard even if you've trained for it Right. Over 10,000 right. feet of gain, hard conditions. Everybody knew that. So did you see anyone trying to break a land speed record for the 5K? No, not for the 10K, not for the for the half. We all knew what was coming. And I think doing things like that are great. But even just taking a more practical approach to even just your regular 45 minute runs. Right. I didn't sleep great last night. I have had a lot of caffeine. I probably didn't eat late enough last night. I'm a little bit of stressed. I, I can do this run. I should probably take it a little bit easier than, than I think I can because I need to absorb and leave room for the stress, right? Same reason if we give, you know, example, I'll give you 10 three minute intervals. 
the goal isn't to make the first one the best. The goal is to make the last one the best, right? And that's why you see so many people failing after one, two, three, four, and five because they went out way too hard. They were, you know, they were thinking with their ego, right? Not feeling out their body, and that's you know, feeling with your feeling with your ego is what, and thinking with your ego, excuse me, is what really opens us up and allows us to make those really irresponsible or impulsive decisions that ultimately and usually lead to other impulsive you know decisions because we you know most people like to swing like a pendulum right it's never stuck in the middle it's you know the it's we gotta we gotta go all the way to the to, to the right all the way to the left why are we hanging out in the middle here you know we have to be extreme and, and there's just there's a lot to be said for just you know like you and i talk about so frequently almost before every podcast is is about just staying even and and not have not setting up expectations you know you go out and you and you buy this gift that you just you just are you know your you know whatever your loved one your family your spouse is just gonna love your kids this is they are going to they're gonna be over the moon and you give it to them and their response is muted like, eh, that's fine <laughs> You know, or you give it to your two-year-old, and they they pull out this this extravagant gift you gave them that they're gonna be pumped about, and they spend the next six hours playing for the, playing with the paper inside the bag. And you you don't maybe resent them, but you're disappointed that they in them they didn't like it, and you you're not like pumped, but the fault is on you, right, for having an expectation about someone else's response and someone else's how they're gonna interact or react to something they did not know they were gonna getting they were gonna get. Same thing goes for yourself, having expectations for runs and, and and shelving those and just being okay with it. Again, it's not it's not this magical high of highs, you know, feeling that you get when you meet the expectation, but at the same time, it is never the low of lows because you're always just kind of feeling things in the moment, making decisions in the moment and appreciating the moment. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Uh way back in the day, someone said it may have been you, I don't know, but uh they kind of introduced me to this negative split mentality in life in training. And it's just been like, I think for me, it's sort of a golden rule. You know, you just mentioned the intervals and I'm always like, just, you know, think about where you're at and come into it under control and then finish strong. And it's uh, usually paid off, but there's no better way than the, to a negative split. Mm hmm. It's just a fact. It's just a great over... Let's wrap it up today. I feel like we negative splitted this podcast today. I think we <clears throat> usually do, probably. Yeah, we, <laughs> we're probably right. I think most people are probably would probably say uh, we start off uh, epically slow when it comes to uh, when it comes to pocket, which is probably why sponsors don't uh, don't approach us anymore. One, because we've turned them all down, but two, they're like. No one listens to the first 15 minutes of this guy's podcast, so there's no reason for us to even add in a sponsor or an ad. Right. Um, but yeah. But anyway, that was good. We'll be back on Thursday. As always, we love you guys. We appreciate you. Hope you're gearing up and have a wonderful holiday and a Merry Christmas. Uh, go to our website, c26triathlon.com. It's our one-stop shop for all things coaching camps and community. If you need anything from the man, the myth, the legend, Mike Turali, he's available, crushingiron at gmail.com. If you have any uh, handyman work over the holidays, you can email me directly, c26coach at gmail.com. I might need to take you up on that, bro. The handyman. <laughs> Dude, don't. Yeah. Do not take me in. Do not take me up on that. Um, I'm the definition of a one-hit wonder, man. Maybe one time, you know, because we do negative split, maybe one time I'll try and do one of those, uh, was it Quentin Tarantino or somebody like that, how they do the movies in reverse? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. Memento. <laughs> Memento, yeah. Did you watch that? I did. It was amazing. Oh, so what, maybe what, I'll do that with belief? a podcast. Yeah. I mean, I watched it. I can't really remember. Really strong and then just fucking fade at the end. Just like see if they can put it all in reverse back together. Yeah, and see how they like it. They won't because they'll feel... <laughs> pointed at the end you know it's kind of like the yelp reviewer who has the best experience at the host stand has the best experience with their meal best food they've ever had but the check took seven minutes too long to get worst meal i've ever had ever uh worst, one star never go there <laughs> how many yelp reviews have you left uh, uh, zero if i leave a yelp review <laughs> you I should see, commit me I, oh my goodness dude 
I can't, I just always, I, I am amazed by the internet, like the commenting out there in the world. It's unbelievable. It. We, we've had some of those on our own podcast review. Yeah. We, it's like, you list 700 and almost 40 podcasts. And I think I'm, I think I read one, one time that was like, uh, lo, it, it was said this, love the podcast, but today's two days episode is unlistenable. Because I think we were having like some uh, some technical difficulties. Mm. I think they gave it two stars. <laughs> yeah. So you love every other episode you've ever done. Never felt the need to to rate us. But now because today's you can't. You're like you know what I'm done. I can't. And that that's again just proof that you, you always want a negative split. You want to if you're going to over deliver, do it at the end. Yeah, hundred percent. That says more about this person than us. And. Oh. You know, that's, that's that's why the the manager the manager go to at a restaurant is always never a free app because you forget about that shit by the time you leave. Mm. That's always free dessert. Ah, you know what? Have a piece of carrot cake on the house. You're yeah. Like, what? <laughs> five star, twenty five percent tip for the waiter, and you might have had the worst meal ever. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all about the late delivery. And I think a lot of times places we even discussed this. I'm not trying to get us on a tangent. I'm trying to get out of here, but yeah. We I talked about this. There was a Harvard Business Review uh, article that I read years and years and years ago that talked about uh, customer loyalty. And they said customers are more loyal to businesses that have made a mistake and corrected them than to any other business. Yeah. That's us. We make mistakes for 70% of the podcast in the beginning, and then we drive it home with 30% of pretty solid, mediocre content. And you're <laughs> <laughs> that were, that's like that when we were in kansas city I, and just because you said it it's like oh man that's awesome customer service but we had uh the last night at our hotel the alarm went off at like 4 30 in the morning and everybody had to evacuate and shit and i was staggering around and the guy's running around going it's fine get back in the rooms it's fine and we're like nobody believes him <laughs> we're just hey, nice. there's a no fire one, truck yeah. outside and no, shit and i'm like out there with my coffee I, I, wanted to stay awake and everything. I went back to bed and fell asleep for a little bit. And I was checking out later in the morning and the guy goes, all right, well, thanks for saying he goes, do you, you want a discount or some points or something as you're checking out? I said, uh, why? He goes, well, last night, the fire and all that, he goes, you want a free night? We're like, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I will take it. And now he owns me. I'll be right back. Exactly. Even though I didn't really like the hotel that much. Right. And you want to know who pulled the fire alarm? Yeah. I don't know. The late, the late night guy. Oh, the late night guy. Yeah. yeah, it's all about customer attention. You know, every every month they're like, you know what? <sighs> We're going to get these guys for life. Go in there, pull the <laughs> fire alarm, and go outside. You know, hey, hey, we don't mind comping a night or two. And you're like, really? <laughs> Total perception of the company and the hotel has changed. And now you're going to stay there for life. But I tell you, man, it was a, uh, a lesson. It was interesting watching people, how they responded to that. I mean, people are kind of meandering around the lobby in the hall sort of and then there's like there was a a, a, a look like a mother and three daughters they were in the little vestibule of the hotel you know not quite outside but inside and they were all like in shorts and shivering and everything and then about five minutes later the dad came and it looked like he was bringing all the blankets from the room and they were going let's go to the car <laughs> they're gonna go out and sit in the car and the guy was like no it's fine i swear and he goes no no yeah. we're <laughs> Start up the engine. Start up the engine and get under the blankets. And if it us, go behind your blanket. We'll see you on Thursday. All right, buddy. Take it easy, man. Good.